This video is called The Future Between Now and the End of 2011. And if you enjoy this video, then it's thanks to Mike. I do readings for people and he decided he wanted to buy a reading, but um, instead of having something for himself, the idea was that I would make a video and put it on YouTube for all to see. So the question is about the future between now, which is the middle of August, and the end of the year. The problem is I live just outside Toronto. And life here is very different and the challenges are different um, from other parts of the world. It's safe here but not so much in maybe in Egypt or the Sudan. So it's hard to give information that everyone can relate to. So I think we need a question. So it could be what, what should we do about money? Um, but some people are well, who are going to watch this are well off and are not affected by the economy. The question could be how should we improve or how can we improve our relationships with our children? But again, not everybody who's watching this has children, so it may not apply to that many people. Then I thought, we're all people. So if you're a dog or a cat watching this video, sorry, it's not about you. But I decided to make the question, um, what can or should we do uh, so we can live better and more fully between now, that happens to be the middle of August, and the end of 2011? So what I'm going to do in a minute is shuffle and pick three cards and look at what we get. Um, but a couple of points first. I'd like to point out that every card we pick um, is going to give good advice, right? But it's important to trust that we're picking cards that apply to the question or that we answer it. Um, so somebody can say to you, don't go out and get drunk every night. And that's good advice, you know, good advice. And a card may tell you that. But it, it, it won't apply if you don't drink alcohol or if it's not your habit to go out every night and get drunk. So. Years ago, a friend of mine, um, uh, the mother used to always say, be nice. That was the solution to every problem. And it was okay, but um, it, often it wasn't that helpful. So being nice is okay. So if somebody's pushing, this is partly because if somebody's pushing you around and you react by saying, by being nice, but you're doing it because you're afraid or because you're whipped or you're beaten, then being nice is not a good solution if you do it out of fear. But if you know that bullies are cowards, they're damaged people and they're insecure and you're being nice to them because you know that the power of love can envelop people and turn them into better people and improve them, then being nice is a good approach. So I think we have to think about what's good advice actually. So the question then is how do we know we've got the right cards that come up that we choose? And I think partly we have to trust the tarot itself. We also have to trust ourselves. But one last point is, I think it's important to shuffle the right way. So I'm suggesting that you look at the video on how to shuffle tarot cards and follow what it shows, but that's just my opinion. So I also want to say use the Rider deck and, or use a deck that gives you pictures. And forget about the Kabbalah and astrology and numerology and elements and all that stuff. Because the tarot is good enough on its own and it doesn't need help from other areas of study. Just look at the picture on the card and do something with it. And you'll be able to go deep. You take the image and you go burrow down into it. Because when you start with um, saying, okay, this is, this is the Knight of Swords and swords are air and air, blah, blah, blah. You're sort of going sideways if you bring in planets and signs and the whole bit. So it's like saying, okay, here's a famous speech from Hamlet. Beat, either near beat, et of apros. And you probably didn't understand that because that's Russian for to be or not to be, that is the question. So, instead of taking the picture on the card and ignoring it and, and translating the symbolism into the Kabbalah or a tree, the tree of life or an element or all the rest of it, forget about it. Just look at the picture and do something with it and you're going to get a much better, clearer, more meaningful reading for yourself as well as for somebody else. So that's my introduction. I'm going to take the camera over there to the table and um, I'm going to pick the cards and discuss them. Okay, here we are at the table. I've done my shuffling. I spread the cards out this way and then I picked three. And I would like to point out, um, I'm going to turn them in my usual way, which is top to bottom. And the thing is, I, I always turn cards from top to bottom. 
The deck knows that I'm going to turn cards from top to bottom. Every tarot deck that's ever existed knows that I'm going to turn cards from top to bottom. The cosmos, the universe, knows that I'm going to turn the cards this way. So when I turn it this way, understand that it's all expected and that I'm not changing the meaning because I should turn it this way. I, you should turn it this way. So I'm just telling you that because some people... Um, might be offended that I'm, and think I'm doing it wrong because I'm not going from side to side but top to bottom. Okay, so first card. Okay, the six of pentacles, six of coins, right? And I'm sure you all know that one. So, if you look at the picture and remember the question, the question is, what can or should we do to live better and more fully between now and the end of 2011? So, you look at the picture. What should we do? We should, we should be generous, right? It's simple. So help where and when you can. So let's say you're at the checkout counter and you've got some small change. Put it in a, um, a container where they're collecting for charity. You know, be generous, be kind and considerate of other people. Um, there's a fellow I know who, who, would, who would often um, drop money, like a coin or two, in an elevator. And the thing is, if you've ever... You know, you've been walking along and you, 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 you notice there's some money on the, on, the, on the ground and you pick it up. You feel happy. You feel as if it's your lucky day, right? So this fellow would leave, he would drop money in elevators because he knew, he knew that when people found it, they'd be happy. It didn't, it didn't have to be a large amount. Even a small amount would do. And so they would be happier. And the thing is, if you do that, it's going to come back to you because you're the one who started the happiness, so the other thing is, if you need help, right, you may be these two people down here. If you need help, yet you act in a generous way, then you fi you soon find that your changed understanding and behavior is going to put you in a position where you're going to be able to help other people. So, um, and I, I can't help but remember, um, uh, if you've seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, um, which is actually, I think, a really good movie. Um, the bit at the end when Abraham Lincoln, during the presentation, when Abraham Lincoln was on stage, and he said, um, you know, what's important is be excellent with one another. And that's really a good thing to do and a good way to be. And that's kind of what we should be doing right now, between, certainly between now and the end of 2011. Be excellent with one another and things will improve and everybody will become more happy. So help other people. Um, the suit is coins, round coins. And somebody once said to me, money's made round to go around. And I kind of like that because if you try to hold on to what you've got, you cut yourself off and you end up struggling. So um, it's better to be generous and to spread the wealth, so to speak, because you get back what you give out. And that seems to be true, generally speaking. So that's part of what we're supposed to do between now and the end of the year. Um, and so I, I want to illustrate this particular little, using this video, um, take your lead from the picture on the card and do as much with it as you can and make as much sense of it as you can, given the question. And you're going to do a much better reading for yourself or for other people. So that's that. Second card is the King of Cups. Okay. So, uh, fellow holding his balance. We've got similarities. What he's holding in his hand, what he's holding in his hand. And it's a, a, a man of power up here, and it's a man of power here. Okay. So, uh, what it was to. Okay. It's two things. This King of Cups. Let me move that there. Um, it's a king whatever kings may represent, we can do something with that. And it's also a sort of cups, so we can do something with the sort of cups. So it's a king. Between now and the end of 2011, understand that you can give orders and they're going to be obeyed. You can be a king. If the king had been upside down, it would have been a warning. Don't become too bossy, too aggressive, too hostile, too pushy with other people. right? Because the king is upside down. It's like the negative side of the king. Whereas it's upright. So, um, be clear in your mind about what you want or what you want others to do. 
And if you're clear and respectful um, in your request, you're going to get the result that you want. So it's like a, encouraging us to be decisive and clear in what it is that we want. So be confident in your dealings with other people because they'll appreciate it when you're clear and decisive and know what you want. They're going to appreciate it and they're going to cooperate with you because people like to be told what to do. It means they don't have to think for themselves. So be like the king. Be like our king between now and the end of the year. Um, it's also the king of cups. So we're supposed to be warm and loving and kind and considerate. That type of thing represented by cups, which are, is like a bowl shape, right? And you're, you're holding. Um, so um, you want to be kind and considerate, not so that you can manipulate people. And that if the king had been upside down, you know, don't manipulate people. But it's upright. Um, so be honest with your emotions. Um, tell people the truth, right? And they're going to accept it even if they don't like it. There's a friend, a friend of mine suffers from depression, but we didn't know it back then. And, but the good thing about it was that when you, gave her, when you called her up, if she, didn't, if she was in a bad way, she would say, I'm having a bad hair day. And you knew, okay, we'll leave her alone and she'll be fine and when she's feeling better we'll get together again. But the problem was some people, there were some people she knew that she couldn't say this to. And it was always a struggle and a strain pretending to be okay when everything wasn't. So I liked the fact that she was honest. I liked the fact that she, she could trust me enough that she could say to me, bad hair day, and I understood, I'll leave her alone and she can get back in touch with me when she's ready. There was something good about that kind of relationship. I think it's because she was honest. And she was honest enough to be honest with me. And I knew where I was with her and I didn't have to guess. So be like the King of Cups. Um, how are we going to live better? Be confident that I think our loving nature from the Cups and our ability to care for other people will make life better for them and for us. So when we look at the king and the six together, um, we can see a kind of similarity. Because it looks like the man who is giving here is in control and the king, they're kind of repeating the same message. Um, so how are we going to live more fully? Take charge of our lives and be decisive when we have to be in our relationships with other people and I guess with ourselves. Um, uh, if, and th so if, if people want to do something that's, that we know is stupid or is, is not going to get the result that people want, take the lead and say, this isn't going to work, do it this way and we'll get the result, rather than just follow along with something you know is a bad idea, just out of laziness. So don't be lazy if you, because we're represented by the King of Cups. We know what we have to do. We know what's right. So let's just do it. Um, the third card is... The Ace of Swords. So, it's an ace for number one for a beginning. So, how do we live more fully and live better? Make a start with cutting. Make a start learning to cut. So th this can be cutting out um, what doesn't belong in our lives or what's no longer of use or what's no longer of value to us. So if we put that together with the Six of Coins those two together, then if we have clothes that we never wear, give them away. Give them to a thrift shop or to people who need them. If we have anything we don't use that we never look at, that we never make use of, give it away to somebody who's going to appreciate it and who's going to benefit from it. The Ace of Swords and the Six of Pentacles. The generosity here, the cleaning up through the sword um, and cutting out what doesn't belong. Those two go together. Uh, if we put that ace together with, the, with the, the King of Cups, what do we get? Um, the King isn't supposed to be just kind and considerate, but he's supposed to wield a sword. He's supposed to be discriminating, right? So he's, he's supposed to, or we're supposed to, um, uh, uh, understand and recognize where 
the kindness that we give to other people is going to be most appreciated and most valuable. So if you keep giving help to people to take and take and take and never give anything back and never try to help themselves, using the sword of discrimination, recognize that this is not a good thing to keep giving to these people who don't appreciate it. Partly because it means that the people who do appreciate it don't get as much from you. And that's kind of wasteful. And so let's not waste. Um, you're going to be in better shape to help people who need it if you can use discrimination as well and not just be kind all the time. I'm thinking back what I, in the introduction of what I mentioned about um, if you're nice out of fear, that's not a good thing. So if you can kind of consider it out of fear, that's not a good thing. Being kind and considerate out of strength, that's something else. That's worthwhile. Um, so the Ace of Swords as well can mean um, uh, get started organising. Take small steps to put your life in order or to keep our lives in order. So if we use something or we take something, put it back where we got it from instead of just leaving it lying around where we're finished. Because we may have trouble finding it later, but it's better to be organised with this Ace of Swords. So that when we need things, we know where they are and we can find them. So wherever you go, leave order or orderliness behind you. And over the course of the next few months, your life is going to become an awful lot more tidy and harmonious and better. And you're going to be able to live more fully because of it. That's the video. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you next time.